Hi everybody and you're very welcome to Los Angeles English School YouTube channel. I'm Helen and in this video we're going to take the complete speaking section of the TOEFL test and this is a new version 2020 where you get only four questions. Make sure that you have a sheet of paper and a pen or a pencil so that you can take proper notes and also make sure that you actually will be trying to give your full responses. Also, in this video, I will provide you with my own example. So after each question, um, you will try to give your response and then you will hear my example, which will get a high score on the TOEFL test. Also, if you haven't subscribed to this YouTube channel yet, make sure to do so by hitting the subscribe button and the bell icon. You can also visit our website losangelesenglishschool.com and get ready for your TOEFL together with Los Angeles English School. All right, so here is your TOEFL speaking section. Let's start it. In this question, you'll be asked to give your opinion about a familiar topic. After you hear the question, you will have 15 seconds to prepare your response and 45 seconds to speak. Some people believe that people who play video games are learning important life skills. Others believe that video game players are wasting their time. Which view do you agree with and why? Include details and examples in your explanation. You may begin to prepare your response after the beep. Please begin speaking after the beep. While some people suggest that you can gain essential life skills when playing video games, I personally tend to think that in most cases it's just a waste of time. On top of that, it may cause harm to those who play them. The first reason why I think so is that the majority of modern video games contain a lot of violence and provoke unhealthy immoral emotions. It has a really negative impact on video gamers as they become more aggressive and prone to violent acts. Secondly, video games often cause addiction. People usually end up playing them too much. This in turn leads to health-related problems. For these reasons, I completely disagree that people should play video games in order to learn something. Please listen carefully. In this question, you will read a short passage about a campus situation and then listen to a conversation on the same topic. You will then answer a question using information from both the reading passage and the conversation. After you hear the question, you will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. The University of the Rockies newspaper has published a letter to the editor concerning a university policy. Read the letter about the hiring of temporary instructors. You will have 45 seconds to read the letter. Begin reading now.
Now listen to two students as they discuss the issue brought up in the letter. Hmm. I thought university teachers were well paid. I mean, they have to have advanced degrees and be experienced to teach here, don't they? Yeah, but I've heard that over 60% of our teachers are temporary. Really? Well,、uh, I don't think my education is suffering because of it, do you? Well, it's kind of hard to know, isn't it? I mean, part timers have to hold down another job, so they can't concentrate on course development. That's true, but I still think my teachers are pretty well prepared. Yeah, me too. But there are other drawbacks to having part time teachers too, like, well, I needed to see my literature instructor, but arranging a time was difficult because she also works at the city library. And then our meeting wasn't private because temporary staff members share offices. Really? Uh huh. And they don't have a voice in departmental issues. Or access to university funding. Wow. I can't imagine they feel any loyalty to the university at all. The man expresses his opinion on the issue of temporary instructors. State his opinion and explain the reasons he gives for that opinion. You may begin to prepare your response after the beep. Please begin speaking after the beep. According to the letter, a lot of university instructors work on so called adjunct contracts, which means that they are officially employed only for one semester at a time. Thus, they experience many disadvantages. The man agrees with the main points of the letter. He gives several reasons for his opinion. First, he said that temporary teachers get low salaries, and because of this, they are forced to have a second job, which makes it much harder for them to focus on the university course. Another minus that he mentioned is that it may be very complicated to set up a meeting with part time instructors, and since they work in shared offices, meetings with them are not private. Finally, the male student stated that such teachers have no access to funding, and their opinions regarding issues that arise、uh, in their departments are not taken into consideration. Please listen carefully. In this question, you will read a short passage on an academic subject and then listen to part of a lecture on the same topic. You will then answer a question using information from both the reading passage and the lecture. After you hear the question, you will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. Read the passage about imprinting in baby birds. You have 45 seconds to read the passage. Begin reading now.
Now listen to part of a lecture on this topic in an ecology class. So, we've been looking at animal behavior and especially the process of imprinting in young birds. Of course, the first thing a young gosling sees when it hatches is its mother. Now, birds that walk almost immediately after hatching, as opposed to those who are helpless and can't get around for several weeks, have to follow their mother for their own safety, for their survival. It seems that walking birds will follow just about anything that moves and has eyes. In fact, we've seen that they will easily imprint on human beings. But some researchers have gone even further. One set of experiments, for example, has found that young geese will imprint on inanimate objects, such as plastic milk bottles that are attached to a moving object, like an electric toy train. Now, it seems that in some species of birds, and this includes nesting birds, which are helpless after hatching, imprinting can affect later learning and social behavior. For example, territorial behavior. If a human takes on the role of the parent, the bird's social behavior becomes directed at the wrong object or species. A bird that sees a human as one of its own kind and follows or accompanies a human will not understand the importance of keeping to its own territory. This is why wildlife specialists tell us not to try to raise young birds that we find outside a nest. If the bird becomes attached to us, it can't learn to associate with its own species and would quickly be rejected. The professor explains the notion of imprinting in young geese and ducks. Explain how this behavior develops and how it might be important for the bird's survival. You may begin to prepare your response after the beep. Please begin speaking after the beep. The reading defines a phenomenon which is called imprinting. It is a process when young birds get attached to their mother after hatching. The lecturer discusses this phenomenon in more detail. Firstly, the lecturer talks about birds that start to walk as soon as they hatch. These offsprings follow their mother for safety, but they may imprint on people and even on moving objects. The professor goes on to say that in some kinds of birds, imprinting can influence their development and territorial behavior. If birds imprint on humans, they will not understand that it's essential to keep to their own territory and they will not be able to see other birds as ones of their own kind. Thus, they won't be accepted by their own species. That is why it's um, very important not to take young birds out of their nests. Please listen carefully. In this question, you will listen to part of a lecture. You will then be asked to summarize important information from the lecture. After you hear the question, 
You will have 20 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. Listen to part of a lecture in an architecture class. When planning a structure, engineers must consider the internal and external forces the structure must withstand. These are called loads. Broadly speaking, there are two types of loads, static and dynamic. Now, static loads concern those forces that don't change, and dynamic loads are those that change abruptly. First, let's look at static loads, which can be broken down into dead loads and live loads. Dead loads concern the weight distribution that the structure itself must bear. These would include beams, uh, walls, floors, ceilings, and roofs. Calculating dead loads is quite straightforward. Now, live loads are those other weights that a structure must support. Live loads can be people, furniture, or, in the case of a bridge, cars and trucks. You may wonder why live loads like people or cars are considered static since we move around all the time. Well, we can calculate how many people will fit into this classroom, say, or how many trucks can be on a bridge at the same time. Our comings and goings flow. They do not happen abruptly. Imagine that your family is sitting in different parts of a room and someone says, Oh, look, northern lights. So everyone rushes to the same window to look outside. The live load changes from the weight being evenly distributed to its being concentrated at one point. Like dead loads, live load calculations can be computed. Now, remember that I said dynamic loads are those in which the forces change suddenly. For example, a gust of wind. Extreme examples of dynamic loads are tidal waves, hurricanes, or earthquakes. Think about earthquake zones. Here the engineer must consider features that allow the building to withstand or, let's say, counteract a sudden change of force, a force that is unpredictable. Using points and examples from the lecture, explain the kinds of loads an engineer must consider when building a structure. You may begin to prepare your response after the beep. Please begin speaking after the beep. The professor defines loads, which are internal and external forces that the buildings and other constructions are to withstand, and engineers have to take these forces into consideration. He covers two main types of loads, which are static and dynamic ones, and provides examples. Static loads are those ones that don't change too suddenly. They, in turn, can be divided into dead and live ones. To illustrate dead loads, the lecturer names ceilings, roofs, and walls. Examples of live loads would be humans, furniture, or means of transportation, if we talk about bridges. 
Live loads are considered to be static because they don't alter too abruptly and can be calculated and computed. Whereas dynamic loads are more unpredictable and can change suddenly, like winds or various natural disasters, for instance. Congratulations! You actually made it! And I know how difficult it is to ace the whole speaking section of the TOEFL. If you felt difficulties, no worries, don't get discouraged. You just need more and more practice. By the way, I have videos for each speaking section separately. You can check these videos out. I will put the links to those videos uh, down below here. And there I cover all uh, speaking sections separately and I provide you with useful information, uh, phrases and evaluation criteria. So make sure to check them out. If you haven't subscribed to this YouTube channel yet, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. You can also visit our website losangelesenglishschool.com and prepare for your uh, TOEFL with Los Angeles English School. You also can get professional evaluation of your speaking and writing if you'd like to. All right, if you have any questions, make sure to contact us and I wish you have a great one and see you in my next video. Bye!